Welcome everybody. This is Two EdTech Guys Take Questions and Share Cool Stuff. And just to start off with some cool stuff today, as Richard was noting, I have a shirt on, right? That is a shirt with the Southern Arkansas University mascot on it. Take it like that. So I went to high school in Magnolia, Arkansas. Perfectly good, cool little town. The, the, the mascot of SAU is the, the mule rider. Now, you might think to yourself, can't say that I've heard of such a mascot before. Well, the story goes this way. Back in the day when the football team was going to go play against some other college, right? In order to get to the train station, they had to take mules to get to the train station. Therefore, mule riders. Now you know. Ta-da! All right, so with that, let's kind of jump into things. Oh, yes. You know, there's a reason I leave that slide in there. Let's just say it that way. All right, so got that. And thank you. Thank you for joining us. And let's pass out some other thank yous, all of the good folks at the Krauss Center for Innovation at Foothill College in Los Altos Hills, California. Uh, Merit 20, woo, all right, way to go. And what would this be? What, Richard, what, what would people be seeing if they were looking at this? If they were looking at that, they'd see freetechforteachers.com, my little collection of 15,300 some blog posts about all manner of educational technology. Today's top blog post is, I forget what it's about. Oh, I'll get to it later today. I'll get to it later today. All right, all right, right. Now, now, in order to get to 15,300 and something blog posts, how many is that a day? Uh, a lot. For, for many years, it was four a day. Yeah, yeah. For many years, it was four a day. For the last year, it's only been about two a day uh, because I've been, well, raising children. Well, well I was about to say, there, there are children and dogs, and, and at some point, they're like, there's us too, and it's like, all right, fair enough. Yeah, the, 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 chil the children get in the way a little bit. Uh, well, you know, the dog, I, I get it. If the dogs come first, I, I get it. I mean, no judgment, but I get it. All right, so, so my little thing is Next Vista for Learning. Uh, NextVista.org is an online library of videos by and for teachers and students everywhere, free to use, free to contribute to, free to download from, all screen content, all for a student audience. It's my own little attempt to save the universe from ignorance one creative video at a time. Boom. So I hope that you will give nextvista.org a look at all of the cool stuff we've got there. We've got videos about academic stuff and light bulbs, communities and global views, service to others and seeing service. And we got more. We got careers. We got uh, videos to help kids learn English. We've got all, all sorts of stuff, even advice for teens. You're like, what? Teens listen to advice? If you package it right, just saying. All right. So uh, if you are not busy later today, and that would be 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 3.30 p.m. Pacific, uh, I don't know what time that would be in, in beautiful, sunny, breezy Arizona, because Arizona is like, sometimes we're mountains, sometimes we're Pacific. The rest of the world can adjust to us. And it's like, I, I, cool, all right, that's the way it is. Arizona's a good place, so there you go. Anyway, uh, oh, what we're gonna talk about. So what we're talking about on activities across grade levels today is saving time and removing headaches. So if you think, you know, that sounds pretty good, join in. Susan Stewart and I will be sharing all sorts of cool stuff with you. How this is going to work today is we're going to take some questions, then we're going to share a cool thing, then take some more questions, share another cool thing, take some questions, then finish up. That's kind of how we do it every week. So on that front, let's have you kick things into gear. So Richard, start us off with a question. First question came from Beth, who asked, uh, all students in my district are remote learners for now. We use Google Classroom and Google Meet, along with lots of neat tools to deliver instruction. Mm -hmm. Teachers create the link for Google Meet within Classroom. In the spring, I it was working such that students could not enter a meeting until the teacher started it. And once everyone left, the teacher closed the meeting. Students could not re-enter and hang out with their friends. This no longer seems to be the case. Uh, this is a cause of great concern for our administrators, as students can never be unsupervised. Well. This is a case where you need to use a Google Meet nickname. A Google, using a Google Meet nickname will ensure that your students can't join before you get there because you launch the meeting when you make the nickname. Now you can choose the nickname in advance and then launch the meeting when you get there. Uh, so you can say a student's meeting nickname is Mr. Burn is awesome. 
And then at one o'clock in the afternoon, when you're going to have your meeting, you go to Google Meet and you choose meeting nickname, Mr. Burn is awesome. Kids can't join until you've started the meeting. And then when you close it out, they can't come back in. So use nicknames in Google Meet. I've got a video about how to do that on my YouTube channel. You know, I was just about to ask if we might have a tutorial on that front. And if you want to stick that in the chat, I would be happy to stick it into the links page for this episode. And you might be sitting out there saying, what? There's a links page for each episode? We give that away and the slides and the recording and charge you nothing. That's <laughs> what nice guys we are. While we're back on this topic, though, the idea of uh, as students can never be unsupervised. Is that right? Um, so if you were thinking about like school, like normal school, like in the before times when when it was the before times uh, and were, were students ever unsupervised? Did they ever like, you know, congregate together on part of the playground where nobody could see and, and, and talk to you? So let's 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 understand what we're talking about here. In a very similar way, when we're dealing with online instruction, uh, sometimes we are holding ourselves to standards that we didn't hold ourselves to when we were in person. That's actually something that ought to be considered. Uh, so, so, okay, fair enough. People are worried that there might be some bullying, you know, online or something like that. That's actually something you have to talk to people about. And people have to learn to be able to do things like take a screenshot if somebody is flipping them off or, or whatever it might be. So, so you know, there, there are processes that, that you just should not ignore. Uh, and so when we talk about kids being unsupervised, they get together unsupervised and they do it all the time. And, and yes, I get it, it shouldn't be like on our watch in our system, but we should also be trying to train them to, uh, to use the tools that are available to them to uh, protect themselves as well in the Just Sand department. All right. So Richard, keep us going. What would be the next question for today? I want to piggyback on that one. I almost called you Richard Rushton. I want to piggyback on that one because I was, someone asked me yesterday, I was interviewed for someone's podcast yesterday. They asked me about my, my favorite tip for live online instruction in a Google Meet or a Zoom or pick your platform or Microsoft Teams. One of my favorite tips is give your kids some silence. Like, you wouldn't talk to your kids for 60 minutes straight in your classroom. Don't do it in Zoom. Don't do it in Google Meet. Do your five or seven minute instruction. Give them something to do in a different tab or a different window. And then just kind of sit back and you can be there. You know, if they need help, you can be there. But don't talk to them straight through. So that it's not unsupervised, if you will, but it's not like just purely you talking at them either. So, well, and, and another thing, because because Richard and I are not going to let this this uh, this horse die quietly. Right. One of the most powerful pieces of, say, Zoom and an upcoming tool in Meet is breakout rooms. And if, you, if you're sending kids to like work together on breakout room ideas and things like that, obviously they're unsupervised. You can't be in all of these things. Oh, wouldn't it be great if Zoom allowed you to see them all at the same time? Yeah, I suppose if you, you could. What we need to do is give kids really good things to work with so that when they get together, they don't have, you know, like 30 seconds of work and then four minutes worth of farting around because that it tends to be where things begin to go south. Um, so anyway, <laughs> we, should, we should probably get to another question. But uh, yeah. I hope let's, some of those thoughts are useful. Yeah, let, let's stop ranting on that question for a second. Uh, so a question from Lynn was, I use canvas.apps.chrome as a whiteboard when teaching math in a Google Meet. A lot of Google Meets questions. Uh, I like to create my whiteboards ahead of my sessions by using the new from image option. I save the images as math problems and create new whiteboards with the images for each student. Whew. Uh, is there a way to organize the saved boards? Right now I have a jumble of boards I would love to organize. So uh, for those of you who are not familiar with canvas.apps.chrome, it was the, it still exists by the way. Uh, I don't know how much longer it will exist. So I'll, I'll tell you that. It's a predecessor to Google's Jamboard. It's a predecessor to Jamboard. Uh, and so it's a drawing tool. It's, that you can share with your students. 
but really it's a predecessor to Jamboard. And so my suggestion would be to use Jamboard where you can more clearly label uh, your jams, if you will, your, your boards. And with Jamboard, you can have multiple pages so that you, don't, you won't be creating so many individual files. Right? Uh, with the Canvas apps, you're, you're creating an individual file for every single drawing. Whereas with Jamboard, you could say, I'm gonna have a, a whiteboard or a Jamboard about slope intercept form, and then have 10 or 12 pages worth of sketches or drawings about slope intercept form. And you just share that with your students as opposed to trying to share a new file every class period. You're just gonna keep reusing the same one and keep adding to it all over and over again. So use Jamboard, that's my solution. So I, I would echo that the Jamboard's a good, a good tool. Uh, in, in f mainly for the reason Richard described, you, you, can, you can essentially have these multiple whiteboards within a, a set. That's good. Uh, I would say that no matter what tool you're going to use on a whiteboard front, um, get, get very comfortable with the idea of doing a quick screenshot of something that you've got uh, and then tossing that screenshot into like a Google slide. It becomes easy to organize slides as well. So, yeah. so that, that's another approach. So even if, uh, if Canvas apps for Chrome goes away, uh, you can always have those slides uh, happy and ready to go as well and probably easy to recreate using, well, Jamboard. So there you go. So Richard, what would you say if I suggested we do a cool share? I would say that would be a great idea, Rushton, because... Style points for you for having something that has share in the word in it, by the way. Whiteboard.chat yeah. is a new service that does exactly what Lynn was asking about in the, in the questions. And that is you can create a series of whiteboards for your students that they can draw on and you can watch remotely. So let's, let's do a quick screen share. Let me share my screen. Sure. And I'll show you what whiteboard chat actually does. It is really pretty slick. So let me share it real quick. Right. Share away. Right. So here's whiteboard chat. So all I do, I hit start drawing. If I do start collaborating, that's one board that I can share with all my kids. Okay. Kind of like Jamboard. But if I hit start teaching, what happens here is I have this Jamboard or this whiteboard. And I do that. Oh, look at grid view though. Ooh. Grid view. Now these are all boards that can be given to my students. Now you're saying, but Richard, there's only nine boards available. Wrong. Now there's 18 boards. Now there's 27 boards. Now there's 36 boards. I can multiply by nine. So I want to invite people. Uh, just give them that link. And they're invited. That's Pretty impressive. darn slick. That is slick. I, that, matter of fact, I, I'm seeing more tools over on the left than you normally see on a Jamboard uh, toolbar as well. Oh, yeah. So over here, I've got manage boards. If you, so if you, I just did everything without a sign in. If yeah. you sign in, you can do other cool stuff like manage the boards so you can organize them better. Uh, delete them. You can download them. You can see that over there delete them forever. We've got uh, you know, different drawing tools and all kinds of cool little things in there as well. So that's whiteboard chat. I think it's a super cool tool uh, for you know, that sort of managing, uh, you know, you want kids to draw their math, do, do a diagram. Uh, one of the things I just did today, I didn't do it in whiteboard chat because I kind of forgot about it. Uh, I did it in Jamboard actually in my classroom today. I had my kids diagram simple wireless networks. Uh, I probably should have done it in whiteboard chat because then I would have been able to look at them remotely instead of them having to share them with me. But anyway, 
I, I was waiting for you to finish that sentence with, uh, I had my, my students diagram sentences, which I was going to give you full grammar style points for that. Um, no, I did that. that. That was a previous life. I, my first teaching job, I did that. I, now, now I do wireless networks. Yeah, you know, when I, when I taught in Japan, so, so after I graduated from college, I moved to Japan and, and taught in high schools and junior highs alongside teachers of English there, right? Japanese teachers of English. And, uh, and having, having had a lot of uh, <laughs> sentence diagramming in, in high school and having grown up under the grammatical gun because my mother is a professor of literature and composition, I could answer a lot of their questions, you know, you know, they, they'd have these kind of random questions about, uh, you know, the use of the subjunctive in English. And I'm like, oh, well, yeah, much rarer. But if I were a carpenter and you were a lady, you know, and I, I could talk about that. Way old school reference on that one. All right. So with that, let's jump into like the next question. So toss it out there. All right. The next question. And I just realized we might be entertaining each other more than anyone else right now, but that's okay. Uh, it, it's Thursday afternoon and I had a long day of school. I had a Typical at a classic school day where I didn't get lunch or a bathroom break all day. So oh. forgive me if I'm a little punchy. All right, all right. So but before you jump into the question, though, uh, just for the folks who are who are with us live at the moment in the chat on a one to ten, how much are we entertaining you? Not how much are we entertaining each other? How much are we entertaining you? One to ten, where ten is like this is awesome. One is like I'm enduring it. I lost a bet. Whatever it is, right? You know, like like there. So we see like ten, nine, ten. Ah, that's not so bad. That's not so bad. Okay. Daryl's like, I don't know that I'll be back. All right, all right. 10, 10 with an exclamation point. Daryl, we love you. Joan, Leora, oh, these are good people. These are good people. Too kind, too kind. Clearly uh, too kind. Okay, so new, new question. Go ahead. New question came from Hi. Ryan, and it's Hi. not a Google question. That's awesome. Bring it. Uh, my school uses Microsoft products. I'm looking for the best way to share videos with my students and let them have the ability to download the videos for offline viewing. These are videos I am creating. I have searched your blog, but I haven't found anything you put me in the right direction. Ryan. So Ryan, I would put, I wrote back to him uh, and I said, put them in OneDrive. And I actually made a little video. Uh, I'll put it in the chat. I made a little video on how to share in OneDrive the videos that you've created that you own and put them in OneDrive and then your students can download them when they need them. One of the other cool things about OneDrive, uh, you can password protect them. So if you need to, you know, if for some reason you want to password protect them, great. Uh, you can also set an expiration date. That's the other thing that's pretty cool. You can set an expiration date. So I just put the link in there. Uh, so if you really want to make sure your students have them there. Uh, the other thing, that's, you know, if OneDrive's not your thing, uh, OneNote is probably an equally good option. Uh, I just kind of default to OneDrive for my Microsoft needs because for me, it's just a little more familiar and a little less cluttered. But there are people who love OneNote. Uh, Tom Grissom, who teaches at uh, Indiana State, I believe. i uh, followed Tom for years. It's a great, great podcast. Sorry if it's not Indiana State. Sorry, Tom. But Tom Grissom has a fantastic uh, podcast. And he talks about using one, uh, note, the, the one note a lot uh, with his students. And it's a great way to share, share videos. So uh, check, check that out. OneDrive or OneNote would be my my options there. Well, I was just going to add that, you know, the people I know who, who use, uh, who use Microsoft Teams and, and, and Microsoft, you know, like your end of the universe stuff, Microsoft, they just, they just adore OneNote. And so, so I, I would echo that thought. Yeah. So let's do another question and then we'll share a cool thing. All right. Uh, question uh, came from Andrea or Andrea, I'm not quite sure. Uh, I'm attempting to create, thank you for your videos on Canva. I'm attempting to create a similar video that you made with your video pop up on the screen and showing where your mouse is moving. Are you creating these with Canva? Uh, no, I'm not. So the tool that I use for 95% of all the videos that appear on my YouTube channel mm -hmm. is screencast o -Matic. I use Screencast-O-Matic. 
They have a free version. I use the paid version. Uh, I know it's kind of a contradiction. I run freetechforteachers.com and I pay for Screencast-O-Matic. Uh, Screencast-O-Matic.com, I use their, their desktop software, uh, which costs 20 bucks a year. Uh, you know, that's three or four chais at Starbucks. So, <laughs> you know, not expensive. Uh, Screencast-O-Matic.com gives me a lot of little editing tools like highlighting my cursor, like changing the cutout for my disembodied head when it, when I hover it around the screen, mm. uh, has a white has a whiteboard function, has a green screen function. Not that I use the green screen function very often, but it does have one. Uh, has a lot of transitions and bumpers that you can use too. So that's what I use. I'll point out if you're looking for a free option, Loom, L O O M dot com. Mm -hmm. Loom dot com. Great tool. One of my favorite things about Loom, they have a Gmail plugin that will let you launch the recorder directly from your inbox. So when Rustin emails me and says, Hey, Richard, how do you do X, Y, or Z? I can just hit the Loom button in my Gmail and it launches my recorder and I can start screencasting right from my inbox. And it will then send it right to Rustin. Pretty cool. That, that is pretty nice. I'm, I'm a big fan of Screencastify, although I like the things you were telling me about Screencast-O-Matic there. And Screencastify, one of its biggest strengths is that it, it just integrates seamlessly with, uh, with Classroom and with Drive, right? So just anything you record is automatically in Drive. You click Share, and then you got the link, and you can do that, different things with that as well. So another good tool on that front. Speaking of good tools, uh, here is a man who has put together a very impressive set of them to, to make uh, really, really good uh, videos for his students. Now, Richard, I'll have you know that I hesitated before sharing this one, and I'll explain why in a minute, all right? So, so what it is, it's, it's just a, a video that this guy right here, his name is Eric Cross, he's in San Diego, very talented guy, I mean, just, just really, really cool, interesting guy, right? Well, he decided this summer, he was like, you know, if I'm going to be making videos for my students, I want to, I want to learn from the people that they're watching. So he started like watching YouTube and Twitch and stuff like this, you know, for, for the people who, who mm -hmm. are personalities in, in those spheres and, and learn from their techniques and things like that. And so he put together, the, like, if you watch this video, you're like, oh my God, this is really impressive. And, and he's, he's built a show out of it using OBS, Open Broadcasting System, right? Or at least I think I've got the S right in OBS. Yep, you do. Um, all right, and and so that's that's kind of one of those things uh, where uh, where it's like, man, that's really impressive. So so why did I hesitate before putting it up here? If you watch this video, uh, there are there are two really common reactions. One is that is so impressive what he's done, and the second one would be that seems so involved I could never do it which actually holds you back from trying these things out. And, and ultimately my decision to share it is so that I can speak to that second issue. Now, as you watch this video, yes, technically he's brought a lot of things together in a really cool and impressive way and the students are responding. Why do the students respond well? Is it because he's got this really cool tech or because he's a guy who asks their opinions and, see, and, and smiles at them a lot and, and brings a lot of passion to what he does? It's more B than A. And so when you think about creating a, a video for your students, you could just be using like Screencastify, your, your you know, mug is in the lower right or wherever. Yep. And, and if what you're doing is you're just kind of having fun with it as you go, the kids will be good with it. Now I should add that up here, he, uh, he went, it went through several hoops to get, uh, to get simultaneous translation of his, his captions. And so there's a tutorial on doing this in Google Slides. He did this uh, using uh, PowerPoint, as a matter of fact, uh, but but I included a tutorial for doing this in slides. So if, like like you can see at the bottom of the screen right now, the uh, the captions for uh, for what I'm saying at the moment as one incredibly long sentence. But but there are ways to to say okay, I, what I want to do is I want that to appear in Spanish or you know pick your language, and you can do that. So. Pretty cool stuff. I love actually watching, you know, teachers who've, who've really taken a lot of, a lot of time and energy to make something cool, make something like this happen. 
and he did. And so you, you, should, you should definitely find uh, and follow Eric Cross because dude is very, very cool. All right. So Richard, I think we've probably got time for about one more question. Pick, pick the one you like and let's go with it. All right. Uh, so let me go. Oh gosh, there's so many good questions and I'm, I'm trying, to, trying to get all of them. Uh, all right, so here it is. Uh, this one comes from Zurina. I believe that's, I believe I pronounced that correctly. Hopefully. Uh, I'm planning a fun activity as revision or review for my learners. I'm a high school language teacher. My idea is to use various language concepts and aspects of prescribed literature and present them on cards to play in 30 second intervals. I already have the cards prepared. I need help incorporating some technology. How can I randomize the groups for participation? And is there a digital scoreboard with sound effects, clapping that can be used to make it more fun? Uh, so, my recommendation was to check out flippity.net. Yes. So flippity.net has great templates for using Google Sheets, Google Spreadsheets, to do cool things like make a game board or Jeopardy style in Jeopardy style boards. Also has templates for randomizing student groups and doing random selection of student names. So flippity.net, great resource. But since we we're talking about things made by teachers, I'll also give a shout out to my buddy Russell Tarr, who teaches over in France in Toulouse. Uh, and he has a massively popular website called classtools.net. Classtools.net. Uh, he has all kinds of online templates you can use and modify for, again, things like randomizing groups, very, lots of different kinds of games, lots of kinds of random name selectors, all kinds of cool stuff. You have like 70 different game templates available on the site. And he's a history teacher and he has a new book coming out full of history activities. So check it out, uh, classtools.net. Very cool. And if there is a little info on his book, uh, see if you can snag a link for that and we'll include it in the links as, yeah. we go as well. Uh, and, and style points uh, for Russell for having a, a Ron Burgundy image appear on his page as well. That, that's uh, Oh yeah. All kinds of, uh, all kinds of neat stuff here. And uh, yeah, I'll try to, I'll try to pull it up. I just saw it on LinkedIn the other day, his new book that's coming out. So I'll try to, Try to find that real quick before we end today. Okay, yeah. give, give that a look. I'll, I'll start us kind of down the path of finishing yeah. things up. As you come and join us each week, you, you hear me say this all the time, but, but it's just, it's worth the reminder, right? Treat yourself right. In order to be the kind of teacher that can, that can creatively respond to a student at a point when a student needs something a little different, you have to take care of yourself. So make sure you're getting plenty of sleep, getting a little exercise, get away from the screen from time to time, all of that thing. Is there a link for Eric Cross uh, was, was a question. You know, actually, I'm gonna call it a right now because I can, right? So, so this is, there is Eric's video right there. I'm gonna put that in, I'm gonna add that to the links page. This is what the links page looks like, by the way, as we go as well. So all, all good things there. And, by watching cool videos like Eric's, you, you kind of get in that mode where, you know, you're like, all right, good, good, good. I can, you know, I can try this out. I want to try this out. I want to try that out. And you can talk to people about cool ideas you run across. That's taking care of yourself, which you should do. All right. So if you are not on my newsletter, I would encourage you to sign up. Why? Because there's lots of good stuff in it. And you might even win a chai or some version of coffee or hot chocolate or whatever floateth thy boat. All right, but, uh, but feel free, uh, put, put it out every single month. I uh, love the different opportunities to kind of share cool things that come along. Those of you in the chat, I'll make sure to get the September link in here in a minute as well. Uh, where to check the Google Doc link, please? That is on, that is on our page. So if, if you, so this right here, for example, I want you to take a look. The, the next Vista webinars page, and I'll get this to you guys in the chat right there. I'll also email this to you once it's updated because what this will do is this will move down a notch and we'll have the episode 19 in there for you as well. But when you go to 
say two EdTech guys take questions and share cool stuff, you'll find our previous episodes. And so what you find here are uh, not just the recording right here, but what our cool shares were and, and what time they appear in it, as well as the slides, the links from the episode and that kind of thing. So we are happy to help on that front. Nice guys that we are. So I will get the newsletter uh, link in here as well. It, it, it looks like this when you go there. And the key thing is to just be like, hey, here's my name. You know, I went to a webinar, blah, 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 all good. And that is now in the chat for you. I write a blog called Inspiring Improvement. You can follow this link to get there once you're into the slides. I've written some books to help folks out. If you're curious about these, feel free to stay in touch. I'd be happy to uh, help you work with your colleagues on that front if that's of interest. Next week, two Ed Tech guys take questions and share cool stuff. And we and see, look, I've already got the front slide done. Oh my goodness. Will wonders never cease? And and by the way, on this page, if you, if, you, if you get here via the slides, you can click on the title and that will take you to where you can register for it. Ooh, very nicely done. Ooh, very slick. Yes. Very slick. Talk to us. Oh, so I've got the Practical Ed Tech Handbook, which came out a couple of weeks ago. This is a year six of it, the sixth edition. It's free. Just go to practicaledtech.com slash weekly dash newsletter. You can sign up and you'll have a copy available to you in your inbox right away. 64 pages of my favorite ed tech tools, tips, and tricks, including a section I'm really pleased with about search strategies, which I have featured on the next page. Next slide. Ooh, oh, there it is. Very so, nice. Uh, while this is also featured in the Practical Ed Tech Handbook, I went to much more depth about it in a webinar that I did yesterday around this time, yesterday evening around this time. And that's also available now on demand. Just go to practicaledtech.com, click on on demand, and you'll be able to access that webinar. And last but not least, on the last slide, my YouTube channel now has 29,002 <laughs> subscribers. Oh, yeah. I've got all kinds of tutorials on all kinds of things from Google to Microsoft to everything in between. If I'm there, you can always send me, a, send me an email, richard at burn.media. If you're wondering where do all these questions come from every week, my inbox. Many of them come from my inbox. Some come from Russia's inbox, our inboxes. Email me, richard at burn.media, or tweet at me at rmburn. My name is Rushton Hurley. I run the little nonprofit educational save the world shindig called Next Vista for Learning. I hope you'll give nextvista.org a look, and I hope you will join us every week when we get together and, and, and find ourselves uh, mildly entertaining, hopefully to you as well, uh, and, and hopefully informative that, that this is a good combination of just having fun and sharing good ideas. Uh, and if you're like, yeah, but I need it to be like more directed to, to my concerns, send us a question, that'll, that'll handle that. So with that, I will wind things down. I'm going to stop the recording. And for all of you who have been watching the recording, thank you for joining us. I hope you will register for next week. Take care.